Hello everyone, welcome back after fall break. Um, I'm sort of uh, out of pocket. I'm, I'm not actually here with you uh, uh, this week. So I'm doing this recording for all of my students uh, here in person and for all of my students who are learning uh, virtually at home. So give me a second, I'm gonna switch over uh, videos and we're gonna be talking about subject matter. I have a really cool project for you this week. So uh, let me switch uh, computers around and uh, we'll, we'll begin. Hello everyone, uh, uh, this week I'd like to talk to you about uh, subject matter. We have learned about the elements of art, lines, shapes, textures, and forms. Uh, but today what I'd like to do is use the things we've learned before fall break and apply it to uh, the, the new content. And our new content uh, today is about subject matter. Subject matter is what your picture is about. For example, what do you call pictures uh, that are about outside? So what do you call paintings about outside? Okay, yeah, they're called landscapes. Landscapes are pictures about the great outdoors. So if you see sky, if you see uh, land, uh, anything, you know, a village or a forest, uh, anything that's pertaining to outside, the subject is about outside, we call it landscapes. What do you call pictures of people? Yeah, portraits. Portraits are pictures of people. It could be of animals. Um, you know, there's also portraits of animals. Um, if it's a, a group of people, we call that a group portrait. Uh, uh, in the spring, they'll get your whole class together, and we'll call that a class portrait. But you had your portraits made um, uh, uh, using photography uh, a, a, a week or so before we had a uh, fall break. So pictures of people are called portraits. Pictures of outside? Landscapes, pictures of people, portraits. What do you call um, paintings about objects on a table? So when an artist will gather objects, we set them all up on the table, what do we call that? Yeah, a painting about objects on a table is called still lifes. And I, I believe the name comes from uh, the objects have to set very, very, very still. Uh, and sometimes the objects uh, could be uh, flowers or plants. Um, or things that might be sort of living. So they've sort of uh, picked up this name, uh, still lifes. So objects sitting on a table, sitting very still, still lifes. Pictures of people, portraits. Uh, 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 the uh, pictures about outside, landscapes. So here's what I like to do. Uh, for, the, for the whole month um, of October, for each week uh, in the month of October, since uh, now we're back on a schedule, we're, we're coming back... Uh, a lot of our students I'm seeing weekly now, uh, I'd like for us to create a drawing for each subject matter. And so one week we're going to be focusing on landscapes and drawing landscapes. One week we're going to be focusing and drawing uh, portraits. And uh, uh, hopefully maybe the week before Halloween or the week of Halloween, we're going to be drawing some still lives. And so uh, that's our plan. So this week, uh, let's focus on landscapes. And so I got a few questions for you. We have a very famous painting uh, that hopefully you're, you're looking at, uh, and it's called The Starry Night, and it's painted by a very famous artist called Vincent Van Gogh. So let's say uh, Vincent Van Gogh gets up uh, one morning, and he says, you know what, I think I'm going to get up, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to paint a landscape. And so he gets up, he grabs all of his supplies, uh, he goes outside, and it's in the middle of winter. So what would the Starry Night look like if Vincent Van Gogh painted this landscape in the middle of winter? What could we add or what would we see in this painting that would give us clues or signs that was painted in the middle of winter? Now, since uh, 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 Mary, uh, um, uh, you guys have a, a sub with us, they can always pause the videos to take uh, questions. Um, and so if you uh, want to do that, you can. Uh, feel free to do so, but just be thinking of what uh, would you see differently if this was painted in the middle of winter. I'm hoping you guys would said uh, snow. Uh, we could have snow falling, we could have snow on the mountains, we could have snow on the rooftops. Uh, that would have been a, a huge uh, sign or clue that this was, had been painted in the season of winter. Okay. Well, what if uh, Vincent, Van Gogh, uh, Vincent Van Gogh got up one morning and decided to paint this in the middle of springtime? 
what could we uh, do or what would we see in the painting that would give us clues that this painting was actually or this landscape was painted in the middle of spring. Again, if you want to pause you, uh, uh, the video uh, to get uh, class responses, you can. But what clues would you add or we would see that would tell us it was spring? I'm hoping some of your answers would have been like uh, the, the hills would have had green, fresh green grass, the trees it could be budding and having new leaves on it, uh, or flowers could have been blooming all over the mountains. Um, those were, uh, and it could be, you know, the sun could have been out instead of uh, uh, the uh, moon. And so uh, nice, pretty, sunny um, uh, spring clouds that would have been nice to see. So those are all signs that if he would have painted this in the spring. So what if Vincent Van Gogh gets up one morning and decides, you know what, I'm going to go outside and paint a landscape. But this time, it's in the middle of summer. What could we change? What clues would we see in the painting that would give you um, the idea that was painted in the middle of the season of summer? You know, um, I, I hope that you would have mentioned the sun. Uh, we could have uh, changed the whole title of the painting. Instead of calling it The Starry Night, we could have called it The, the Sunny Day. Uh, the uh, hills would, could have been green with grass. The trees could have been nice and green and flush. We could have seen people outside in maybe uh, t-shirts or um, uh, playing games that we would uh, see uh, in the summertime. Does anybody uh, have a, an idea of when this actually was painted? What season? If you said fall, you would have been correct. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh painted this in the late uh, part of November, which November, it is uh, fall, uh, it's sort of uh, late fall, but um, it had been definitely uh, cooler temperatures, um, and he, that's why he painted it with lots and lots of uh, blue colors uh, to give it that really cool feel. And with the seasons sort of changing from fall and getting ready for winter, uh, he's uh, drawn... Uh, painted the, the sky very, very windy. And so he painted all of this for, for a reason to give you that, that fall feel. And so my thought uh, is, what if I taught you guys how to draw a really, really cool fall landscape? And so at this point in time, um, I'm going to uh, uh, let, let you guys get your materials. Um, we're going to be working on uh, blue uh, construction paper. Uh, and since uh, everybody is still uh, worried about uh, the virus uh, and sharing materials, if you have a black uh, crayon, I'm going to uh, uh, draw mine with a black crayon. If you don't have a black crayon, I'll let you borrow one of mine. All right, everyone. Uh, what I have is I have my uh, blue sheet of paper and I have a uh, black crayon. Um, what I'd like to do is let you guys watch me first and see how I draw some of the things uh, that we might see in a fall landscape. And then, um, then you guys will have the opportunity to draw your version of your fall landscape. You can always, I'm not looking for you to make it exactly like mine. I'm just trying to teach you some tricks and some tips on how to draw certain things you might see in the fall. And then we get to see what you uh, learn. Um, and so it, it's, I'm not uh, worried, uh, don't worry about messing up. I just want you to try. Uh, and just see what you can come up with. So, um, name me some things that you only see in the fall. If we go outside and we look around, what's what's the uh, one main thing that uh, we may see that gives us the clue that you're in the season of fall? And um, one of the things that, that usually you tell me, and you might have already said it, is the leaves. The leaves are starting to change. So if I'm going to draw a tree in the summertime, I would uh, start off with the number 11, and then I'd make a, a sort of a puffy thing across the top. But if I'm going to do a fall tree, I'm going to need to make the limbs bare. And so I'm going to start off with the number 11. And if I draw large, uh, the limbs are going to go right off the page, and I don't have to draw all of those uh, uh, branches but no leaves. Okay, so if this is the side of my tree, number 11, 1-1, one, one. then the tree grows so tall, then it's going to start to split. When it splits, it makes the letter V. So if I want to make the split, I'm going to make the letter V. 
Now, notice that my number 11 is now too short. So I'm going to have to make my number 11 come up, but it, it sort of angles, it goes diagonal to match the letter V. And then I'm going to V again and again. So anytime you want a limb to split, make the letter V. And then you're going to make the outer part a little longer, a little longer. And then I have, uh, now the branches were one, now it's two, now it's four, and I'm going to split and make those branches want to V off again. So there's a V. Oh, my crayon broke. Hang on a second. Let me peel the paper. Uh, make another V, another V, another V. And then I need to make my uh, the outside of the branches just a little longer. And then you keep doing this until either you run off the page or they get the branches get so skinny that they just become thin lines. So I like to make mine so large that it just runs right off the page. Okay, so recapping on what we drew so far is our tree number 11, 1, 1, and then we put a V, and then we make the number ones longer, and then we V off again, and, and uh, every time you want the limbs to split, add a V, until the limbs get so thin that you, that you um, uh, they become lines or they run off the page. What letter is that? If you can see it, what letter could that be? Yeah, we use V's, but what if we fill in the empty space with the letter Y? So if I make a bigger Y, maybe you can see that one a little bit better. And so every now and then, I'll just put all these little Y's in, and it makes the little branches, uh, it fills in the empty space, and it could be those little twig branches. All right, now, What's wrong with the bottom of my tree? The tree looks like it's floating in the air. So to fix that, I need to draw the ground. But if uh, this time of year, uh, if you're like me, I've been too busy and I haven't had a chance to mow my grass, and so I've got grass lines sticking up. And so I'm just going to add some little marks to show you that it's grass. Now, uh, what's happening behind the tree it's going to be, I'm going to draw a heel, but instead of drawing a line, what if I show you that the wind is blowing and I can draw the little lines like they're leaning to make it look like the, the wind is blowing the grass. And I'm going to uh, put a sort of a, a hole. Uh, and now I'm, I'm doing a little trick. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm rolling my crayon and my fingers and then I'm going to move my hand up and down, up and down, and roll it as I go, up and down, rolling. So what will happen is, if I roll it and move up and down, I'm going to create what we call tree bark. Gives us texture. Okay, now. If you said, I uh, said, so what's one thing that if we look outside, it's going to tell us fall? And you said leaves. I don't have any leaves up there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to uh, the color crayons. I'm going to choose uh, greens. i got a dark green, a light green. I'm going to choose some yellows. And the leaves, this time of year, they stop making chlorophyll, which makes them green, because uh, they're getting ready to, to sort of hibernate or go to sleep during the, the winter months. And so they quit making the, the chemical that makes them green, and that's how they start to change colors, from yellows to orange to even reds and even browns. So with this light blue paper, we can actually use your crayons and give us some really, really cool leaves. Now, instead of drawing individual leaves, I'm just going to do a little dash, a little wiggle, a little dash, and I'm just sort of spreading them out to show you that they a uh, tree has all of these green leaves on it. Uh, and then at the uh, bottom, you know, if the leaves are not on the tree, where could they be? Well, they could be on the ground. So I'm going to change from dark green to light green. Again, I'm just doing these little dashes. The more dashes I do, it's going to look more like a real fall tree that we might see this time of year. 
and we'll switch to yellow. Yellow is not the best color to show up on this blue paper, but it still looks pretty cool. And we're going to come back with yellow in a few minutes for something else. But I'm making some of my yellow leaves, and now I'm going to start putting some on the ground. They could be even flying in the air. So I'm just doing these little dashes. So I'm not making perfect uh, shaped leaves. I'm just doing little dashes and marks. Orange. We've got a crayon that sort of broke. It's a tiny orange. But it works really good because all I'm doing is just making dashes just all over the place. And I'm not pounding. I'm just going back and forth making little dash marks. Um, again, my hand's not in the way. You can hopefully see some oranges. If you see the table shaking, I am putting a little pressure to it so that you can uh, hopefully see it on this blue paper. So then we go to red. Make some red dashes. That really brightens up that tree. And again, if it's not on the tree, it could be flying or floating in the sky. Um, or it could be on the ground getting ready to rake. So right now all the leaves outside are, are changing um, uh, colors, and they will be for the next couple of weeks. And then right before you guys go trick-or-treating on Halloween, uh, they'll all start to drop. So you'll be crunching through them as you're walking through, uh, through people's yards. All right, now, right now, the sky is blue, but also the grass is blue. I need to make sure this grass is green. And so instead of just coloring it green, I'm going to add all of these little marks. And if you want to make the wind look like it's blowing, make, make them uh, diagonal. Make them look like they're leaning. So we went over our lines, now making little short lines, and just make them look like they're uh, blowing. Fill in some of that blue's empty space. You know, like that empty blue space because it looks like sky. So we're going to make it look like grass. In this time of year, grass isn't always green. So instead of being nice dark, uh, dark green, I might make it uh, yellow. I could use orange. I could use some uh, different fall colors. Uh, and there's a uh, light green to fill in. And the more marks you make, the better this is going to look. So as I'm filling in, just reviewing, I started off with the number 11, 1-1, one, one, the letter V, and then I make the number of ones longer. Then every time you want a branch to split, put a V and make them a little longer, add some Ys, and then we start filling in the colors of the leaves. And I'm just doing little dashes. And if you want to make tree bark, I'm going, I can go in and color in my tree brown. Uh, some trees uh, out in nature are not always brown. They could be gray. They could be uh, a light green. They could be different colors. A lot of times, um, a lot of artists will grab uh, the color brown. So again, I'm turning and going up and down at the same time. All right, so we got our fall tree. We got some grass going on. What can we put on this side? Name me something else you only see in the fall. And I'm going to give you a hint. Could be orange. Usually they're big and round. A lot of people would like to go to uh, patches to, to uh, get them. So yeah, why don't we draw pumpkins? So I'm going to draw, oh, I need to go back to my black crayon. I'm going to uh, draw, man, I have much luck with my crayons, am I? I'm just going to use this little short one. Uh, I'm going to make a half circle. So oh, it's not a very good pumpkin. I'm going to make some really big. I'm going to make some sort of small in the middle. And this gives me the idea of a pumpkin patch. So if I want to add the grass, the reason why I don't draw the bottoms of the pumpkins is because they sit in the fields. Uh, the farmers don't go out and mow around their pumpkins. So they, they uh, will add, uh, they, they live, you know, uh, will grow in the um, grass and the weeds will grow all around them. So it looks like they're growing in a real pumpkin patch. So I add some grass. Uh, I want to give some ridges to my pumpkins. Um, you know, this time of year, a lot of people like to uh, make jack-o'-lanterns. So if you want to make a jack-o'-lantern in yours, you can. Um, oh, the stems. You saw that's what, now they're starting to look a little bit more like pumpkins. Putting these little rectangles on there. Uh, and pumpkins just don't set out there. They don't grow like this. They don't go, boing, hey, look, I'm a pumpkin. They grow uh, on a vine. And so if I want to make a nice curvy line that sort of uh, waves around. I might do that twice. Um, and that 
makes it look like they're growing on a vine. And I can always add a leaf or two. So when I go to color in my pumpkins, here's my secret. Don't color left to right. I would color from top to bottom, top to bottom, and it gives us the illusion that these pumpkins are sort of round. Yeah, my crayon, since it's sort of broke, I'm, I'm laying it on its side a little bit, making it really dark. So I'm coloring from top to bottom. Instead of going left to right like I normally color. And if I leave a little space, I can always come back in and add some other colors to my pumpkins. Uh, they have the brown stems, so I can always add a little bit of brown. That's a good sign that the pumpkin's ready to cut when the stems start turning uh, colors. And then we'll use my uh, brighter green to make my vine and my leaves. Guys, pretty smart. Um, if I don't do something down here, it's uh, nobody's going to know it's grass. It's going to look like the, the pumpkins are floating in the sky. We can't have that to happen. So I'm going to throw in some of those green marks. And it's okay to be a little scribbly in this part, as long as I don't scribble all over my pumpkins. So I'm just trying to give it some color. Uh, and I'm also, I, I know you guys didn't come in just watch me uh, draw, so I'm trying to hurry. But I want to give you some drawing tips so that when it's your turn, uh, you can uh, do this. But I just am encouraging all of my students to really fill in some of these empty spaces where we have all this blue color from the paper. And I might even go in and add a little bit of green so it matches this side. But I can go back and do that a little bit later. All right. So now, um, you guys uh, brought up, we got a, a fall tree, we've got a pumpkin patch. Who planted the pumpkins? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Farmers plant the pumpkins. So let me ask you this, where do farmers live? No, farmers don't live in the barn. They live in a farmhouse. So let me show you how to draw a really cool house real quick. So what is my favorite number for today? It's the same as the tree. What number is that? Yeah, it's the number 11. Okay, now the top of the house, it's going to be a diagonal, diagonal, and you've got a top of the house. But on the top of the house, you have what we call shingles. So to make a shingles, I'm going to do a zigzag line across the top. It's a little hard to do zigzag on that direction. And it didn't have to be perfect. Uh, I'm going to make a door. It's a rectangle. I can make a rectangle for a window. And if I make two skinny rectangles on both sides, we call those shutters. So this is just the old farmhouse. And I'm going to put one way up here at the top. And I'm going to put these little lines in it because these are the shutters in the old farmhouses that you were able to shut those when bad weather comes in. Now, uh, most of the time, these are just for decorations. I'm going to make a diagonal line go in and back down vertically to make it look like the door is actually open. And put a little doorknob. Now, what's the house made out of? If it's made out of wood, we may see some uh, horizontal stripes. Uh, and if you don't make them perfect, it makes the house look older. So if I'm trying to make this old farmhouse look run down, old, and a little bit on the creepy side, the less perfect it is, the better it's going to look. So if the house is white, now my white crayon is not going to show up uh, real well uh, on this uh, paper, but I'm going to try it anyway. It's going to lighten it up a little. And since it's not really bright white, it's not going to look brand new. It's going to look old or older. Oops. Uh, to make the house even look older, older, I'm going to add a little bit of orange. Yeah. Uh, you can add a little bit of brown, but if I add a little bit of orange to the house, it's going to make it look like some of the paint spilled off. We see some of the wood showing through. And I, I will probably add a little bit of brown to that, especially to the door. Now, I can color the inside really black, 
and really dark, and it's going to look like the, all the lights are out. So here's the old fall house. I'm going to add some red shutters. Shingles on top. And then a little bit later on, I can either, like I said, I can take my black and maybe color it all black inside if it's really, really, really dark. But if the farmer or somebody's at home, they might leave the light on. So I might draw um, maybe a circle. When somebody's at home, and I draw the light around them. It looks like the light is on. They're looking out the window. Okay. Now, what time of day? I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but in the fall, it's starting to get darker earlier. So what can we put on this to make it uh, appear uh, it, this is at night or uh, night is quickly approaching? Oops. We'll go back to that black crayon. You can't see that. What, a, what letter is that? Yeah, it's a capital C. And if I do that twice, I make what we call a crescent moon. And then if I go back in and color that in. Now, Van Gogh had a really unique way of making his sky. And so I'm doing these yellow circles around it to make it look like the moon is glowing. And I could do little circles and put circles around them to make them look like stars. Okay, so we got this, uh, we got a fall tree, we got a pumpkin patch, we got an old farmhouse, um, and then we might put in some little rectangles. So what are the rectangles? I said, oh, that's a good question. These little rectangles are fence posts. Because, you know, you got to have fence, maybe if you got animals, uh, cows or, or some kind of other animals, you don't want them out just running around. So they, uh, a lot of farmers would put up a, a fence. But if the fence is really old, you know, they're going to be crooked. Um, and it, you know, it's not going to necessarily be perfect anymore. So I'm trying to think what we see in the fall. And if you like to make it a little spooky, again, we mentioned some, uh, some things about um, uh, jack-o'-lanterns. Um, we put up this old creepy fence. If uh, my white crayon show up better, I'd make it white. But since it didn't show up very well, I'm going to just make it an old wooden brown fence. So it won't take but a second. And then uh, what's behind the fence? That's another question. So we could just keep adding details. This is one of those pictures where I really, really would love to, for you to add your imagination and details, details, details. So if I draw a curvy line back here, uh, that could be a hill. Uh, we could also draw a, a scarecrow. Maybe a scarecrow's over the fence. You might see some of those in the fall. So maybe some straw sticking out, a hat, uh, and then you know I can always do the, the face. And they have a stitch smile. The letter T for a, a shirt, and then the legs of the pants. Not going to see them because of the fence. And then of course you know you got the straw sticking out for the hands. Um, you know, I can always make the straw yellow. And then the old farm hat can be brown. But you can make yours any way you want. And to make them stand out uh, and give it a good, nice fall color, I can make it as, uh, maybe it's got like a red flannel shirt, some old uh, blue jeans. And you can't really see the pole. Uh, the skirt curls are usually... Uh, hanging on a pole or standing up by a pole, so we won't be able to see that. Uh, for the, a good face color, I might use an orange. Um, now, going back to my uh, the hills uh, or uh, mountains in the background, just gives it a, a little bit more of uh, a, a space to it. I can always go back in and, and make that a darker green. So, I'm, again, I'm just going to rush through this real quick. I can always touch it up later. I don't want you to rush through yours. I want you to take your time. 
uh, but if you don't get finished, you know, for some reason you run out of time, you guys can always take yours home and, and finish them. Uh, I do not have to uh, have these back. I'm, um, I'm sort of getting behind on hanging up stuff, so please keep uh, keep your work. So I made that little dark green. I might go in. Oh, I forgot. You know, you could always add tombstones like a cemetery or a graveyard. Uh, back there in the back, um, I found uh, some tombstones back in the field one day. And come find out it was a family uh, graveyard. I didn't even know that was back there. So you find out all kinds of cool stuff by exploring. So you might have some tombstones or a cemetery. And then for the sky, I'm going to start with a purple. <clears throat> I'm going to make the wind blowing. I'm thinking about what the starry night sky looks like. I have the poster on the on the board. When they turn the lights on, you can see it a little bit better. And again, I'm just doing all of these uh, marks. The more marks you make, uh, the cooler this is going to look. Now I'm adding some blues. We already have <clears throat> the paper is a light blue, so I don't have to add, uh, but I got this really pretty uh, blue that, that looks well with the uh, purple. I can also go back in and add some white. Uh, maybe it'll show up on your paper. Um, but the more uh, colors and things that you add to this, the more fun your fall landscapes is going to become. And so I'm going to go back in and finish that hole in my tree. And I'm going to put another shadowy figure up here at the top. It's got a pointy hat. And so who do you know that might be in an old creepy house with a sharp pointed hat? Mrs. Um, well, that's not very nice. It might be a, uh, you know, somebody might have said a witch or somebody, or it could be Dracula down there. You know, this is your your picture. You can make it what, uh, however you want. Uh, I just wanted us to learn about fall landscapes and draw and show you some drawing techniques of how to create your own fall landscape. So my picture might be a little crooked. So again, uh, it, it's going to be your turn. Uh, you'll get your blue paper, find you a black crayon, draw, and then add as much color as you can. Um, I'm going to leave this drawing here so you might actually get to see it in person. Um, and uh, my guest teacher also made one so you can actually see uh, Miss Cahoon's um, uh, drawing as well. So I hope you guys had a great fall break. Welcome back and enjoy your fall landscapes and ha have a good time with it. So thank you, and I'll be back uh, next week, and next week we'll, we'll uh, learn about portraits. So have a good one, everybody.